welcome back. So we were talking about the New York Police Department and how Pakistanis are contributing, especially the overseas and diaspora Pakistanis are contributing towards the national development. So not just that, I would say that the inner era of digitalization in the era of the um, extreme usage of the social media, uh, I'm going out there playing sports, something feels like very little and it has vanished over the period of time, but it has not completely vanished because we have someone in the studio, two young, brilliant young women who are out there to make sure that they're empowering women in the field of sports and not much is being done, especially in the field of sports when it comes to the women empowerment. So I would like to really introduce our two wonderful, young, brilliant kids uh, who are uh, super into the volleyball. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce Alicia Junaid. She happens to be the founder of Empower Sports Academy. Assalamu alaikum, Alicia, and thank you so much for coming to our show. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Joining Alicia, we have Azra Faru, who also happens to be the co-founder of the Empower Sports Academy. Assalamu alaikum, Azra, and thank you so much for coming to our show. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So you guys are also from the America, right? And I would really want to ask you, um, especially Alicia, you, because I do feel in Pakistan's uh, curricular academies or in the academia, there's a strong emphasis on uh, learning your studies and focusing enough on your studies and sports is something that is a layer like, activity and you can have it when you have enough time but it's relegated as a secondary status right so how does it feel like if, because you are super active in the sport so how do you manage this sort of criticism yeah, so I'm still high school student so this is a very relevant problem for me right. I try to keep both sports and academics balanced as one I don't value one over the other I value them both the same Wonderful. and for me as a high school student coming to Pakistan when I'm doing school in America it is tough right. and I am having to put in a lot of work but it's really paying off because I'm able to help out here and learn and better myself here as well as continuing my education and honestly I think anyone is able to play sports and continue having a good education as long as they have the drive and the motivation to do so because it's really it is tough but it's something that is doable and you have to be able to put in the effort and the time and really get to like work on yourself in order to balance both. But it's, I think both are very important. And I do like that there's an emphasis on academia here, right. but I think people should also allow sports to be part of that. True, very true. Azra, we wanted to ask you about the, how did you come across this idea of creating an empowering sports academy? What inspired you? And do you sometimes feel you want to uh, give up because the big campaigns requires a lot of investment, a lot of effort, there's a lot of roadblocks there. What inspires you to keep going on? And tell us about the sports academy. Um, so we met in June. Wonderful. And uh, Alicia was here in Pakistan from US, so she saw our game. It was her first time play, watching us, and she didn't know that before that there is volleyball in Pakistan. So then we sit together, and she has the idea that uh, why don't we build and place for women only, where women can play sports and uh, all indoor sports. And then we started thinking about it, and then we got and uh, like we uh, built this thing in our mind that we are gonna build a place where women can play only in Pakistan especially so this things uh, like together we have like built this idea of uh, playing volleyball and then I went to the US with her and then uh, there we had a big team from uh, like Kevin Hambly from Stan Stanford University and uh, uh, Denise from Menlo College and Daniel from Oliver right. so all of these people helped us a lot from US right. and that's how we started thinking of Empower Sports Academy. And the whole thing kind of like snowballed into a bigger project of not just creating an academy in a complex, right. but really being able to empower girls and starting it now before we even have facilities and stuff ready so that we can really get girls, especially younger ones, to start playing so that sports as a whole in Pakistan can reach a higher level. Right, and when it comes to women empowerment, right? Yeah. So Alicia, I really wanted to ask you about how do you deal with the failure, especially in terms of not winning? And I'm pretty sure you are a player and you must have came across the instances where you were not winning. And what has sports taught you about the failure? Yeah, so for me, I've never played anything as professional or rigorous as some of the game Azra has played as a person who's been on the national team for so long. Wonderful. But back home, I have dealt with losing a lot of matches, and failing at maybe learning a new skill or something. And it's something that, it's an experience you learn from, 
But it, I think the most important thing about failing is realizing what you can do better, but also that you might not necessarily be where you want to at the moment, and that's okay. And I feel like it is very important to acknowledge your failure and not to just push it aside because those experiences are what help us most because failure is in all aspects of life and it helps us grow a lot when True. we fail even now while we're working on empower if we fail at instituting one idea right then we can go back see what we did wrong right talk to new people see right. get help and then we can try something else because failure it's just growth right it may take a while and it may be really frustrating at the start but i think it's something that helps you learn a lot and i feel like people who don't fail haven't really understood many things about life true true azra do you share the same opinion about the failure and also how do you manage stress do you feel sports is a stress reliever oh uh, yes i do sports is a stress reliever right i can say that because uh, uh, in the beginning i have so many issues with the stress and like the environment over here it, everything is stressed over here <laughs> so when I play volleyball I feel less stressed and uh, um, like I only think about the game not anything else so it's for me it's like I am free of stress when I'm playing right so Alicia coming back to you uh, you feel that especially in the 21st century where there's a lot of talk about the women empowerment and how we should have a more adequate work-life balance do you feel women are sometimes made to feel guilty about managing the work-life balance and also having their happy time or me time or sports time? What's your opinion on I that? I definitely think that women are. I'm still young, so <laughs> I'm lacking a lot of life experience many others may have. But I think a lot of women are made to feel guilty for wanting to be happy and pursue their own dreams and hobbies, especially when they have families that they're by society supposed to take care of and I understand that they are but I think it's always good that women should be able to do things that also make them happy they should be able to empower themselves they should be able to keep working once they have kids and they should be able to honestly like do everything that is enjoyable for them if it's keep if if it's to keep playing sports then I think they should keep playing sports because that sports in general it's just a way to really it l helps you learn a lot a lot about yourself it's a game, it's fun. Even if you don't play professionally, it's still something that's very beneficial to someone's life and health. Right. Azra, do you feel that the role of the sports has a role to play in the women empowerment or sports can empower any gender or any ethnicity or anyone who's playing the sport? Um, yes. Um, in females, like uh, most of the people don't send their like girls outside in Pakistan so empower is helping all the girls to come out and play right. and i have i'm going to appeal all the parents to send their girls outside like my my dad supported me when i was a kid everybody was against me in family but my dad supported me that's why i'm here today right so i'll like appeal to every family every dad every mother to send their kids uh, and especially girls outside so they can right. come and play and that's what we are working in empower we're going to bring girls outside Mm -hmm. We're gonna uh, give them chance to play. We give. Uh, we're gonna give them a good environment and may build the volleyball team. Also, all the other indoor sports we are working in, but uh, our focus is right now in volleyball. Right. Yeah, and that's why our like long-term goal is to build a facility right. for specifically women, so that families can feel safe sending younger children there, so that we can start training them. Because a lot of the areas here aren't really safe for women, right. and there's a lot of hardship that people have to go through in order to get proper training and we want to make a safe facility where people wouldn't vo have problems sending their children right. so that we can really start getting everyone to start playing and we don't even we don't want to make just one opportunity we want to make many opportunities for many people right so Alicia, let's touch on the demographics of the empower sports academy which exactly are the areas that you guys are appealing to because before this program started she was telling me that the people from the Kashmir, people from the GB area are also coming, uh, women especially, and participating in the sports uh, sporting activity. And these are very close-knit communities there. And I mean, they might not be that much open as the people are there in the uh, urban areas, right? So let's touch the demographic part of it. Yeah, so I don't know too much about demographics in Pakistan because I'm not from here. So I'll let Azhar take that part. Um, I've 
I'll tell you, like, some of the girls are here from uh, Kashmir, some of the girls are here from Punjab, like, uh, uh, they are from uh, the north, uh, the rural areas. And uh, also, all the girls are here for, like, because they love the game. It was not easy for them to come, but uh, um, I will encourage those girls to come out. And uh, especially some of the players are very good at it from rural areas. Empower is going to work in those areas to bring the girls outside and uh, give them a good facility, good training, so they mm -hmm. can um, become a good players. Yeah, and even this past couple of weeks, um, we've been in Islamabad, Lahore, and this weekend we're going to Karachi. We've been hel holding like tryout slash recruiting camps for volleyball. And our goal is to get more girls playing for department teams um, and start getting other departments that have men's volleyball teams to have women's volleyball teams so that the amount of players that are playing can grow and right. the amount of players playing at a higher level can grow. And honestly, at those camps, the two we've had so far in Islamabad and Lahore, we had so many people turn up and some people who didn't even live close to the areas, people were traveling from two, three hours away and it was really inspiring to see so many people come in one place because they wanted to learn or do better and get that opportunity. Also, this will help all the girls to like uh, become a professional volleyball player and we will help them to go in any department and play for a department. And uh, we are also building, like helping departments to build their teams like right. Navy, Army right. and uh, Air Force, Vabda. Right. Right. So these girls are going to get jobs when they'll become professional volleyball players. They will get jobs over there in these departments. And this job is going to like really help them in yeah. their every right. aspects of their yeah. right. life. And if anyone wants to build a department, we want to be able to help them. Like if you guys want to make a department for volleyball players, we'll help you make it. Because we want to grow right. the spectrum for volleyball so much greater than it is right now. And not even just volleyball. Right now we're starting there because we both play it and we know the sport, but we want to do it for all under sports like badminton, squash, basketball. We want to be able to empower all girls to play whatever sports they want. Right. So, Alicia, you play volleyball, right? Why this particular sport? Why not some other sport? Um, for me, volleyball is very, a lot more interesting than other sports, but I do love and respect all sports for what they are. But for me, volleyball, it's a very strategic game, and it's okay. not something that you'd be able to see just by watching it. Right. You really need to know the sport to understand the strategy and the skill level that's required. Right. It is also a very like athletically rigorous sport. Like you have to be a lot, you have to be very physically fit, and you have to have a lot of stamina in order to play. And it requires a lot of technique. And those three aspects are like very important to me, because there's such a big mental aspect to the game and such a big physical aspect. And those two parts of the game really make it fun for me to play. Right. Right. So Azra, please walk us through your routine. How often do you play volleyball and what is your training routine when it comes to volleyball? So uh, volleyball is like uh, people think volleyball is easy. It's right. like just you have to stand and play. But so for all Hit of the, the ball. people, <laughs> yeah, but it's not like that, that we ha you have to be very agilatic. You, right. Your stamina should be good, like Alicia said. Right. So um, my routine is when I, I, I have to like wor do some work also. But my practice routine is like uh, five hours a, a day for volleyball practice. And we have to give like five to six hours a day to the volleyball. And then you can get better in that. Yeah. Wonderful. And something I noticed when I first came here is there is not a lot of proper training because most of the players that have played abroad or really played professionally are men. Right. And men's volleyball and women's volleyball, they're very different sports. So when I came here, and first I came in December and I met this girl named Kizra, she really inspired me and she was the one who brought me onto the national team in the first place. Right. And then she introduced me to Azra and when I saw Azra, it was like a whole new moment for me because she right. was so self-motivated and she had learned everything she needed to know about the game and really like worked to improve to a level that honestly no one can even catch up to at this point. Right, wonderful. Thank you so much both of the ladies for coming here enlightening us about the volleyball and how sports are so much empowering not just to the women out there but everyone who's playing sports and again I would like to say in the age of the social media when we are so much glued to our gadgets and electronic gadgets uh, having sports where there's an element of mobility in it is always very good and I think we should move towards that lifestyle where sports is an integral part of a lifestyle right um, once again thank you so much and we are wishing best of luck for your women uh, sorry empower sports academy and if you need any sort of help through our platform 
platform we are always there so with that we will wrap up our show and we will bid farewell until next time allah hafiz and good morning